couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there, Lickin' Refers, welcome to another awesome installment in the never-ending fingerstyle rhythm pattern and exercise video series where every week we alternate between beginner, intermediate, and advanced fingerstyle lessons, all designed to make you a better fingerstyle player and overall musician. For this intermediate lesson, the second in the weekly cycle, um, we're gonna do something a bit different. Usually in this series we'll learn snippets, we'll learn riffs, rhythm patterns, exercises, musical ideas. Now, uh, in this lesson we're gonna do everything simultaneously. We're gonna learn a specific composition. We're gonna learn the first part of Indian Summer by Steve Morse, the legendary Steve Morse. Well, he's known for his electric guitar playing mostly, but he's also a pretty mean acoustic and classical guitar player because he's classically trained. So um, Indian Summer portrays that perfectly, the fusion between classical and modern playing. Now, uh, the first part of Indian Summer has some of the smoothest and most beautiful chord transitions I've ever heard and I want to teach you how to play them. So first it goes like this. summer and our exercise for today. Now the secret between the chord transitions, the smooth chord transitions, um, it's all pretty seamless as you've heard, uh, is key notes, very very specific notes that allow you the time to make the transition with your fingering hand. Before we start I just want to give a shout out to Leonardo who makes these awesome wooden capos. Yeah, wooden capos. They're so beautiful, very smooth to the touch if you want to pet them instead of using them on your guitar. And it's a lot of fun petting them as well, but it's a waste of time, so play with them. They're awesome capos, really, really beautiful capos, pretty useful as well. And um, Leonardo, he was kind enough to send me this capo and I love it. So woodencapos.com or woodenk.com, Leonardo, if you want a wooden capo, go and support his handmade capos. So, um, Indian Summer. Put your first finger on the fourth string, on the D string, on the second fret, your pinky on the fifth fret of the third string. So you have two on the fourth string, on the D string, and five on the G string. Okay? It's an E, uh, E. It's an A minor add nine chord. Um, so it's a pretty awesome voicing of the A minor add 9 chord. So you play this, okay, strings 5, 4, 3, 2, 3. Now when you play the 4th string again, you move your 1st finger from 2 to 3, from the 2nd fret to the 3rd. make the transition from 2 to 3 just as you're about to pick it again, okay? So the E note rings throughout the chord, throughout the arpeggio, just until you need the F note, okay? Now, just before you pick it. Then you pick the third string again, then the second string again. But there's the catch. If you leave the chord on, then the second and fourth strings create a sort of a dissonant sound. Okay, and as you've heard, this uh, composition is very, very melodic. No dissonant sounds needed. So what do you do? You let go of the chord when you pick the second string. Okay? And this is your first key note, the first key transitional note because this note allows you the time to make the transition into the G chord. You put the G chord head 3 and 2 on strings 6 and 5 and you play the G chord arpeggio strings 6, 5, 4, 3. Then 
the third string is your next keynote. It allows you the time to make the transition into E minor and you play string six, five, four, three. And that's your first line, your first of four lines. Transition, transition. Right? And then you play the first lick, the A minor add nine lick again. But when you play the second string on this uh, second round, you play three on the second string, okay? A D note. And this gives you the time to make the transition into a G chord. So, and then you put on the G bass note and you play this. Okay? Strings, six, four, three, one with the D note on the second string still ringing like this. Okay, and when you play the E string, this gives you time to make the transition into the next chord. So you start to see the logic behind the chord transitions. So again, A minor add nine, make the change into the F note, and then three on the second string, put the G bass on, play string six, four, three, one, let the chord go. You have enough open strings there to ring uh, and mask your chord change. And after you do this, you change it to C5, uh, three and five on strings five and four, okay, a C5 chord. And you play strings five, four, three. Okay, the fourth and the third strings have the same note. Okay, the G note. It's kind of a unison. Not kind of, it's a unison. Okay, and this, the open G string, allows you time to make the next transition. So let's just play the second line. The next transition is the B bass note. Okay? Two on the A string. G, C5, B. Okay? Then you play the first line again. G, E minor. But instead of the open third string, you play two on the third string because we're gonna play a D over F sharp chord, this. Okay, so G and then E minor string six, five, and four. And then we put the second finger on the second fret of the third string. This gives us time to put two fingers on, two on the bass, F sharp, and three on the second string. So we get D over F sharp. Now, uh, I like to use my thumb for the F sharp bass, but you can use your first finger. What's important here is to put the second finger on the second fret of the third string. This is the key finger for the uh, last two chords. So. Okay, put the chord on, play strings, six, four, three, two, three, four, six, okay, up and down the chord, six, four, three, two, three, four, six. And then the third string on the second fret again. And you make this transition. You put on an F6 chord. Um, from this chord to this chord. Okay? You use your second finger as an anchor. Okay? You play it, you make the transition, okay? Make sure you're not touching the string as you make the transition. You put one on the bass, the F bass and three on the A string. 
kind of an F5 chord, but since you have the F major third here, um, it's an F6 chord. So um, two on the third string, open fourth, um, three on the fifth, one on the sixth. So again, look at my fingers. Okay, and then you play this. Okay, strings. Six, five, four, three, then back down, four, five, and then three. So again, another rolling arpeggio. Six, five, four, three, four, five, three. And then the B note again, two on the A string, and you return to the beginning. So um, again, A minor add nine. Open second string as a transitional key note. G, third string as the open transitional note. E minor. Then A minor add nine again. Then a D note, three on the second string. Then G. Open E string, C5, B, then the first line again, up to the last note, on E minor just three notes instead of four, and then the fourth note is two on the third string with your second finger, then you put on these two fingers, the first and the third fingers for a D over F sharp chord, you arpeggiate that up and down. Then the third string again. Then make the transition into F6. Play that arpeggio up and down. But instead of playing the sixth string again, you play the third string again, then B and start over. Okay, but the second time you play it, you can make a couple of changes as I played at the beginning. And I'm going to show you the changes in a second. Let's just hear everything again. So, um, the changes. The first change, um, and I just played it um, on the third line, is when you return to the um, uh, A minor add nine the third time, on the third line, I play this, okay? I hammer on from zero to two on the fourth string, and the rest is the same, okay, like this. Okay, this is an optional change. Another optional change that Steve Morse plays is this. Instead of playing the arpeggio, instead of playing, um, it's the second line after the D note on the second string. Instead of playing string six four three one, he plays string six three three one. Okay, just um, just as you know, curiosity there. The last change, after the first line, when you play E minor, instead of playing string 6, 5, 4, 3, he plays the G bass note instead of the G string, so it sounds like this. Okay? So strings 6, 5, 4, and then 3 on the bass, leading you into A minor add 9 again. Okay? So... So your second round might sound like this. Bass. Um, two third strings. Hammer on. And then... So, 
Before we go practice this, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There's a ton of lessons here for you to learn. Um, full finger style arrangements and, you know, beginner lessons as well. So um, subscribe. What have you got to lose? Also, uh, go download the tab from the website. The link is below in the description. Everything is for free on Lick and Riff. The tab is for free. The lessons are for free. But if you want to give something back, there's a large blue donation button right above the tab. You can't miss it and I'll appreciate it any donation whatsoever it all goes right back into lick and riff into producing these lessons into your guitar education so thank you in advance for any donation you choose to make i'll see you in the next lesson feel free to share this lesson with anyone you want your friends your family your enemies your significant others your imaginary friends your dogs anyone who might enjoy it so um thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next lesson bye for now